So coming out of the crash in 2013, um, obviously that was a massive setback for us. We lost the van, we lost several band members, all the money from the tour was spent on getting tickets home. 2014 was the first chance we got to just get ourselves back out there and just re-establish ourselves as a band. When we started um, 2014, the, the idea, was, I suppose, was to just, just tour our ass off. It was a lot of work, a lot of stress. It did work. Obviously we said we wanted to play as many shows as we could and properly obviously like engage with people, get out there and just like tour everywhere we could. For me when we go out on the road and we're touring that's where I feel like I'm at home. I feel like I'm doing something that I, you know, I want to do when I'm out on the road. Like, that's... I love it, that's why I do it, playing the shows is why I do this. So yeah, 2014 was really, really intense as a year. We did so much touring. I think we did about maybe 200 shows or maybe even more. Toured Europe, I think we went to Europe four or five times. We did Switzerland, Luxembourg, um, Belgium, Italy, Germany, uh, uh, <laughs> trying to think. Holland. Um, France actually. Austria, Czech, uh, um, I think that's maybe it. Oh, Poland as well, Poland. James Ilsley, he uh, got us all on shows, good lad. I think I spent most of the year in that van. <laughs> with Carter is, is, is unique because they bring a level of professionalism to the table that I've just not seen from any other artist at this level. They just are able to have a good time and enjoy themselves and make the experience of being on tour, which can be one of the hardest and most draining experiences, uh, just a pleasure. They're, they're colleagues, they're friends, uh, they're a unit, they're brothers, you know, and nothing can come between a bond like that really at the end of the day, and it shows. We spent uh, the whole year touring and didn't have a hotel once we slept in a, a van every single night um, it's summer winter freezing sweating condensation seven of us I think it was 14 months and we just we were at each other's throats it was the right time to stop gigging we're all together at the time everything that one person feels everybody feels because it's impossible to keep things to yourself when you're in a van with six other people. We felt we'd done enough touring. We felt we'd let people know we hadn't disappeared. And we were ready to just knuckle down, get back in the studio, have some quiet time and just really kind of focus down and make the next record the best it could be. Um, and hopefully the best Carcer record. We recorded an album in a shed in the middle of winter, the deepest, darkest depths of winter in the hellish hole that he's witnessed. I wanted it to be like, we wake up, we go in the studio, we get a load of work done, and maybe that we stay up till three in the morning until we do it, and then we go to sleep, and then we get up and just do that Monday to Friday, and then everyone will go home for the weekend. Um, and obviously we've done that for three months. This was just one of those really important releases for us. We wanted to really take our time doing it. Um, obviously, as the years have gone on, things have got a lot harder just to be in the band. Um, you know, we started as kids when we were just 18 years old, and now we're adults and we've got bills to pay and we've got other responsibilities. So it's just that little bit harder just to be in the band. So it was just really important to make sure that this was done right this time and that it reached its full potential just for our sake and for the fans' sake as well. January, February and March doing the uh, album and Yaka's boiler broke and we was literally sleeping on roll mats on the floor for three months. Um, Lou and Patch more so than me because I was down there as much as I could be but um, you know Lou was there for every session, Patch was there for most of the sessions and it was just 
it's freezing. With the previous records, it's been a case of just getting the studio and get it done. Um, not that we rushed them, but there was that kind of um, mentality of just get it done, you know? Uh, it'll do. Whereas with this one, we wanted to capture the best performances of everyone, so we spent a lot more time doing the tracking. Um, I think with the guitars, I know Yaka and Louie lost their minds in there, especially Yaka, because he was doing all the editing. It's a big learning curve for me, because, I mean, I've never really ever been involved in an album. Everything's, you know, it's perfection, it's got to be tidy. I wanted, obviously, to capture something that sounded really organic, but it was really, really, really tight. When you hear a good tape, you just know that it's a good one. This time we wanted to do it, you know, everything perfect, no getting rushed from anybody else, and this is the first time that, you know, anyone else is tracked on the record, so for me as a guitar player, never tracking on any of the car albums, it was a big deal for me to nail it and make sure it sounded, you know, as good as possible. You know, I came in and just tink tinkered with the fills and stuff, made them a bit more human. I just went through it all with a fine tooth comb and, you know, changed the velocities, made it as human as possible. We uh, chose um, all, all, all the drum samples and we used all the cymbals that I use. Every, everything was as close to us being in the studio as possible, you know, without spending thousands and thousands of pounds. With my vocal takes, it was a lot of just doing it line by line, obviously, but even then, breaking it down, kind of word or phrase by phrase, and deciding how we wanted each phrase to sound, where we should put the emphasis, and really just scrutinising every take as much as possible. The best time to do a lot of the tracking was late at night or in the early hours. Don't really know why. <laughs> We all know that this release is, is very important and it's something that obviously can't be rushed. With all the other Carter albums, everything we've always done has always been super DIY. And like we've always tried to do it as pro as we could, but you know, we're not we're not experienced in everything, we just throw our hands to it. With all spring chickens anymore, it couldn't be a backward step, it had to be a huge leap forward. Um, Everything had to be done properly, you know, there's no DIY, self-shooting videos, self-producing stuff, which was a considered option at first, but, um, you know, it just couldn't be done. It was all or nothing. We spent a lot of time just looking for the right label, the right management, the right people behind us that would um, not only lead us in the right direction, but who also had, you know, that kind of belief behind us, that belief that we were able to do it, and um, a belief in the music as well, that was really important to us, more so than the, the contractual side of things. It had to be right. Um, we could have rushed it out and tried to get it out and tried to hit some festivals in 2016, but we would have been picking up the pieces, plucking at straws, you know, just whatever we could get last minute. So we decided, even though the album was finished in October 2015, to wait. Once we picked up management and the label and stuff, we, we waited until late summer 2016 so we can tour at the end the rest of the year hopefully hit every single festival in 2017 because we literally want to do every festival so yeah then there was having to find a new bass player um, and we were lucky enough to find ollie rooney and just instantly clicked and we just thought this is the dude man let's get him in well, I'm in that enviable position where a lot of the hard work has, you know, been done. I've joined in on the last leg, as it were. But for me, it was straight into the deep end with things that I'd never really had to consider before, like performance as like a like a like a physical thing you're doing and concentrating on. And uh, a lot of it was I had to learn a set in I think I had like a week, maybe a week and a half. So really, I've just been getting get to grips with just the material and just the, the it's a different attitude towards playing the music that is something that I've had to adapt to. Everyone's got a pre-designated uh, role that's very evident. So we've got to find out where I fit in, but it'll be alright. It's definitely been a long journey getting here and I think we all just hope that it's going to at least take us somewhere.
it's something you just can't get anywhere else, that feeling of adrenaline and the people enjoying the music. I'm not a sightseer. I don't want to go and see some old crusty building. I want to play a show, that's why I'm there. I'm not there for anything else. It's weird to have five individuals, you know, one of them not even from anywhere near you guys, me, but to all have quite a similar mindset coming together in that, that they want to be as professional as possible to really just make a go of it. We want to help further enhance and push that and take it as far as it can go. People, people who've, who know us know that we tour hard and we work hard, so the whole point is to get it right and then never look back, really. You know, blood, sweat and tears have just been put into this record. You know, there's only one thing left for us to do, really. Our city, they're bad men, they've done awful things, good people, and they'll have a day in the sunshine, I'll tell you that now. Oh. <laughs>